All right, so what we're doing here, we're taking the reciprocating saw and we're cutting everything down. And this is actually a brace piece that originally had connected uh, underneath the car across the transmission tunnel or the exhaust tunnel, whatever you want to call it on a front wheel drive car. But obviously we have to have our drive shaft run through there and we need places to mount our drive shaft. So what we've done, we've actually are reusing this and we're chopping out the middle section so the drive shaft can run through. The carrier bearing actually sits right in here, which would have been perfect, except obviously the drive shaft cuts straight through the middle. So we're just going to chop off the ends to use the bolt holes. And then from there, we'll be able to weld on our bracket to make it meet up straight and perfectly to the, uh, the flange there on the carrier bearing. All right. So we're under the car. All right. I've got a temporary mock-up over there on the front uh, carrier bearing for the drive shaft. And here's the second carrier bearing. And I basically just have it mocked up right now so I can try and figure out where ah, my face where I'm gonna put the diff so right now this heat shielding has to come off it's like uh, one seized nut there looks like uh, plus uh, four more that don't look seized and this drive shaft right here basically the end of our gas tank is just behind this u-joint um, there's a couple of needle bearings missing on this u-joint so that's why it's super floppy right now um, so let's go ahead and drop this. I have no idea what I'm filming right now or if anyone can see anything because I am rolling around under the car and I can't see anything anyway. So there we go. That's better. Ew. Ugh. So there's no spare tire in the Mini Cooper, uh, at least in the Mini Cooper S. I don't know about the regular Mini Cooper. Um, but right here is where we're going to mount our differential. These are not actually the frame rails, so they kind of look like small frame rails. Um, they do tie into the frame rail higher up, um, but this is just for the trunk here. So I don't know what the strength is on that. Um, it is a little bit thicker than the standard sheet metal, but it's not super thick. Um, and then the profile thins off quite a bit. This is the crash bar, or sorry, not crash bar. Um, this is the tow hitch that installs um, to the crash bar or in between the crash bar and the frame. You can pretty much see, get a good idea of where our differential is going to go. And that is what makes the real wheel drive part possible. That is our rusty ew, differential from our 1G, which has four bolt axles. I don't know if that came standard, if that was somebody did a four bolt swap over from the three bolt axles on the rear end. But it's out and it's really heavy. we have the differential in. Uh, it's not mounted anything yet, just supported by the jack. That's sort of what it looks like underneath. Um, the GSX ties in wide, uh, but not really in the same spot that we're gonna be able to mount anything to. So we are going to have to fabricate our own stuff or modify what the GSX came with. So we're gonna chop that in half and then uh, weld on to create our own brackets uh, to finish off where it's gonna mount to in the back. And in the front, so I can not burn myself with the light. The front there actually lines up perfectly with the subframe from the Mini Cooper. So that's going to allow us to basically tie in, most likely not to the suspension bolts, but we'll weld in something that we can tie into and we can bolt right there on the side of the diff. Just a little bracket coming down. point of that was it was actually hitting part of the subframe uh, so it wasn't able to lift up high enough and then uh, this was also going to hit some of the transmission tunnel so we just cut it to get more clearance if we uh, <coughs> if we really want to we can still put quite a lot of threads down in here uh, with a bolt and we just have to put some sort of crooked washer 
But again, that's so close to the subframe that I just wanted to get some extra clearance. Same thing here, which sort of sucks. I was hoping to tie this in, but where it hits on the subframe anyway, um, or the transmission tunnel, I won't actually be able to put a bolt through there anyway. So they're going to be totally useless. So I'm going to be running off this bolt, this bolt, and then the two bolts in the rear. So it'll have four bolts holding it in, which is typically sufficient. Um, I might end up adding like a little cradle underneath or something like that and going across it's pretty close to being level it's ever so slightly off <coughs> that shouldn't be a huge deal but what we can do is make sure our bolts are straight 89.4 89.4 so now we can get this thing fully welded in. These are what looks like either 3 8 or quarter inch plate. Probably quarter inch. So we just jock, took our reciprocating saw and we cut our control arm or our trailing arm off. Part of the reason that the bolt is uh, somewhat seized in the back there and uh, it's going to take me like a couple hours to get it off and I don't need the whole thing anyway since I need to make that adapter bracket. So went ahead and chopped it here just like I did on this side and uh, now I'll be able to weld the plate on there, make a whole adapter bracket just like I did before. That's pretty much it. This is disconnected. The sway bar is like seized on with all sorts of grot and grossness. So we got our GSX trailing arm cut off. I got it at approximately, approximately the same length as I do on the, uh, on the passenger side here for the driver side. But again, it's a guesstimation, and of course, we're going to weld and, and uh, rebuild our own trailing arm on the front here anyway. So we can always make it a little longer or shorter, whatever we need. The hub seems good. doesn't seem like there's a little dirt stuck in there and whatnot, but <clears throat> it spins. There's no wobble or anything. surprisingly heavy so don't need it so it goes under the GSX to die why I don't like this car right now all right so since I'm not really gonna film this entire process because it's it just adds way too much time and I'm starting to get time crunched here on my schedule, but well, considering it's way past October, uh, but this is the rear trailing arm. Uh, a lot of y'all saw the mock-up for this on Instagram and that's what it came out looking like. But in order to weld it to this piece, I need to first weld a plate that allows me to weld onto it. So I'll get this fully welded and yet yeah, there are some pretty bad gaps, but uh, that's the plan which is gonna allow me to get this trailing arm working. So I'll get this piece welded on here, and then I'll get this piece basically welded so that it's uh, not just tacked in place. And I won't weld this face plate on yet because I'm gonna weld a quarter inch plate on the back of that and then a, a nut on the back of that. So that way this actually has something to screw into uh, to hold the whole thing in place. Because obviously I won't be able to get a wrench in there unless I cut a hole in there and I don't really want to do that because that'll actually decrease the strength. So trying to keep as much strength as I can. So let's get to welding. Hello me. <laughs> Alright. It's not gonna work on my head. Alright, we're going on to the car. Let me show you what I did today. Oh, I feel so old now. Alright. 
So <laughs> these are the mounts that I have to hold in the uh, the front of the differential. Then these are the mounts that I have in the rear. So these tie up into this kind of like trunk rail. It's not really a, uh, it's not, what do you call it? It's not really a uh, frame rail. This is the frame rail over here where the strut ties in. Um, but basically I uh, braced it, did as kind of as much welding as I could uh, with all the seam sealer. It's so, such a bitch to get out. And of course it was all catching on fire and stuff too. So that was a pain, but it's all been welded. Uh, well, 100% on like the sides here and then the other side, just m welding where the tabs are, which was also really a, a pain to weld. I bored these out to 5 8 inch so I could fit the bolts through it uh, for the adjustable control arms. To get these braces, they're extremely rigid and stiff, which is awesome, so that should be good. I might double up here just to increase the shear strength on this so it doesn't actually rip itself out going the other way. I just got metal in my hand. That hurt. So that's just some of the, the reinforcement. Um, as you can see, this has been chopped and then re-welded to fit uh, and carry the right angle for the differential or as best angles I can. At the moment, it's leaning forward a little bit, which means it might be overfilled um, when I fill it. So I'll have to be careful of that. Get it in and then actually put our control arms in. And then from there, we can get our trailing arm in, their axles bolted up and everything else. And we can start fitting up the coilover and figure out how the coilover is gonna mount to the rest of the suspension. So that is what we're doing now. This is the mount for the driver's side. So the passenger side's all done. Got a rough paint on it just to keep it from rusting. Might do a coating later. Brakes on there just for checking fitment and stuff. Uh, but looks like everything's going well. I just gotta make sure that this piece is basically the exact opposite of that piece, which, I mean, it's damn pretty close. Looks like this one's a little bit bigger. I might have to shave that down. I shaved down this one for some clearance issues, but I have to cut this corner down because it's actually rubbing a little bit. So I gotta cut it all the way across there. This used to rub a little bit on the line for the gas filler neck. Um, but that worked out all right. Line it up, make sure it fits, make the marks, weld that, then do the mounting for this. But I have to wait for that, not just because of the trailing arm fitment and everything else. Um, like I could do it with this one right now, but I don't know exactly where that rear end is gonna sit. I have the axle kind of space it out where it's gonna sit approximately, uh, but with no, um, I'm putting one of my camber tow rods here and then the other camber tow rod is actually going to go on the bottom right down there where that used to line up and uh, that'll pretty much fit up nice and I got some swage tubes or swag tubes or however the fuck you pronounce it swedged swaged swagged uh, tubes coming in with that with reverse threads right hand left hand and uh, it's going to allow a really nice easy adjustment for tow and uh, camber in the rear but that will permanently restrict the suspension movement to just how it's going to be with the shock and everything mounted. Uh, so then we can check our clearances and get this lined up and uh, not really worry about anything else. So that's pretty much what's going down. It's definitely been a lot of work. Holy crap. Um, my garage is covered in metal. I melted my shoe by accident. I stepped on a thing that I welded that I forgot was hot. Naturally, I could probably make a fortune with all the metal that's floating around the garage and probably in my lungs. Uh, but once we get the rear set up, we're going to be able to sit it down, check ride height. Again, we have a little bit of height adjustment here with that. Um, hopefully, it's not too stiff in the rear. Uh, again, we're riding OEM in the front. We might be able to get some stiffer coils uh, or stiffer springs even just in the front to uh, help with the extra weight that we have with the cast iron block. It's a cast iron block. It's a five-speed transmission, but I swear it's heavier. Uh, cast iron um, transfer case in the rear, uh, which of course adds weight. Drive shaft, uh, cast iron differential as well with an LSD. And of course axles and heavier drivetrain and everything. This is all steel. OEM is aluminum. That's what the OEM looked like, and uh, that wasn't going to cut it. It would have been really cool if we could have, if I had maybe a CNC machine, I could have converted this to... Uh, 
to fit the hub or to fit the axle going through it or something. But uh, pretty much with the tools that I have here, even though I have quite a bit, there was no way of making that happen, at least in not an easy sense. So it was a lot easier to just make everything adapt up. It gave me bigger brakes, uh, basically the same thing I did in the front. So thank you guys very much. Appreciate you guys watching, especially me rambling. And uh, of course, subscribe if you haven't. Definitely check out the channel. Uh, check out the other videos that I have. I got Genesis Coop videos. I'll have uh, a couple of other videos coming out too, which is going to be cool. So definitely a lot of stuff going on. Check it out. Um, C0 Media is going to check out this car uh, hopefully soon. And of course, do a test drive once it's done, just like you did with the Genesis. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. It's about 30 degrees in the garage right now, so I'm heading in, but thanks. Bye.